Hello, a very warm welcome to Scrum 5. It's been another eventful week in Welsh rugby, one which started with a damning report into the WIU's culture and governance and culminates today with an annual general meeting. And let's now sell Sean Hawley and James Hook are here to discuss on-field and off-field matters. Here's what's coming up on the show tonight. A watershed moment, according to Interim Chief Exec Nigel Walker. The WIU must change after a damning report reveals the extent of sexism and governance failure at the organisation. We get our third Welsh derby as the Dragons hunt their first win. It's a new season and a rebrand for the Women's Premiership as some of Wales' stars return to the park. And there's a new kid on the block in Exeter. Catherine Haylett goes to meet wing sensation Emmanuel Faye Wabozo. But we start with the Dragons against the Ospreys as Di Flanagan's men targeted their first league win of the campaign. Two teams who have had some belting matches over the last 20 years. Promising scrum from the Ospreys. A little lack of control at the back, but Watkin. It had to come, and it's fitting, it's gone to that man. He's looked electric in this second half. Yes, inaccurate and ill-discipline. 14 penalties conceded by the Ospreys and all the attacking stats in the Dragons' favour. And Eleanor, that was a, a much-needed win. When you look back at last season, they, they started their season strongly. They beat the Osprey, Zebra, they beat Munster at home. But they haven't won there since, so it was a long time coming in the league. Yeah, 100%. Um, it was a great win for the Dragons. I think Di Flanagan said after the game that uh, he felt that the players had been playing within themselves at the start of the season. Yeah, he's on fire at the moment. I mean, Kai Evans was excellent, you know. I think he was neat player of the match and Rodri Williams was good. Dan. Don't mess with Dan. It takes a brave man to speak to Dan like that, to be fair. I would be interested to find out what Dan actually did say to, uh, to White Douse, but uh, yeah, he's coached, coached us during the 2011 World right. Cup, Dan. Um, well, we're going to turn our attention to off-field matters because this week, a damning review of the Welsh Rugby Union revealed the extent of the misogyny and sexism at the organisation. It also found the governance of the union long failed to put in place those with appropriate skills to run a hundred million pound business and says the organization failed to see numerous warning signs of the crisis that engulfed it today the recently appointed independent chairman Richard Collier Keywood spoke to Catherine Haleth following their annual general meeting Richard 18 weeks in the job I can only imagine after the week you've had it maybe does feel a little longer than that Right, OK. Well, back to the USC. And after their last gasp defeat to the Lions last week, the Scarlets travelled to Dublin, hoping to beat a Leinster team who hadn't lost at home in the league since November 2021. But it was a daunting task as the Irish welcomed back eight internationals to their team. The last time these two sides played, it was the men in blue, Leinster, who came away with a 35 points to 5 win. Into the hands of Deegan. Right, let's turn our attention to the Gallagher Premiership and to Sandy Park, where there's a young Welsh sensation balancing his medical studies with his rugby training. Joining the likes of David Jenkins, Chris Chunza and Joe Hawkins is Cardiff-born Emmanuel Faye Wabozo. Captain Haleth went to meet him. Now to our final URC match of the weekend as Cardiff travelled to Italy to take on a Zebra side who ended a run of 28 losses in all competitions against the Sharks last week. Danger signs here and that was risky stuff and it could work. 
for Cardiff. Mason Grady, oh, control there. Stop the ball dead. This time it's there. Down to the referee. He gives the try to Zebra. It was an action-packed weekend in the USC, so let's bring you up to speed with all the other matches. It was a bonus point win for Edinburgh against a 14-man bull side on Friday as Duan van der Merwe scored a spectacular try against his old team. A cold, wet night in Belfast saw Ulster come from behind to beat the Lions after Richard Creel had opened the scoring for the visitors. Better stuff from Ulster. Nicely done. Here goes James Shearn. What a score by Ulster. High flying Connacht enjoyed a rare success in South Africa as they condemned bottom of the table Sharks to another defeat. Sean O'Brien touching down for the Irishman. In a repeat of last year's final, Munster again edged out the Stormers in a low-scoring affair, Edwin Dogbo forcing his way over for the game's only try. Glasgow moved up to second place and took Benetton's unbeaten record with a bonus point win at Scotston. They're now level on points with Leinster. Oh, what a pass. What an offload. He's so quick and guess who's on the shoulder? It's a first Glasgow try for Kyle Rowe. So here's confirmation of those results for you. Things could not have gone much worse for John Plumtree's Sharks. A one-point defeat to Connacht is their fifth straight loss of the season. So three Irish sides in the top four with Leinster leading the way out on top. The Bulls currently the only South African representation in the top half of the table. Though all four teams have had a Northern Hemisphere tour to start their campaigns. And down in the bottom half, just the one point separating Ospreys and Cardiff as things stand. Whilst, yeah, the Sharks are the only winless side in the competition after five rounds. Right, well, it was the start of the women's domestic season this weekend, which also marked the start of England's new Leary-branded PWR League. As part of the New Look competition, one game a week will be broadcast live on TV, and it all kicked off with Bristol Bears against Sale on Saturday. Stay, stay! Never been away. Okay, in the weekend's other matches, it was Harlequins who came out on top in the London Derby. Last year's semi finalist Saracens laid down a marker with their defeat of Loughborough Lightning. And in the Sunday clash, I can tell you, Exeter battered Leicester Tigers women. Right, well, we are going to talk, we've got a bit of time left, so we are going to talk about the TMO's role in the game, partly because Wayne Barnes has recently re retired and he said we need an open and honest conversation about the role, how, you know, how often we see the TMO intervene. Yeah. Right, well, let's hope there aren't too many interventions next week uh, because we've got two live games coming up for you. Firstly... We're back at the Arms Park Friday night. Cardiff hosts the Stormers. That one live on BBC Two at 7.15 and Club Rugby return on Saturday. Sharks v Dragons. Where are you guys? I'm commentating Cardiff Stormers. Really looking forward to it. James? Scarlet Ospreys. And you've hung up your boots. So <laughs> how do you spend your weekends now, Eleanor? Either at home or watching uh, some of the girls that I work with on the play at PDC. Yeah, well, watching you're a hard-working coach, right? My thanks to James, Sean and to Eleanor for your time this evening. And, well, the Dragons, it's been a long time since their fans have been able to celebrate a home league win and it was even sweeter for it being a derby. Bradley Roberts takes on Morgan, bundles him away and crashes over. Rio Dyer pops his cheeks and will fly all the way home. So Rodney Parade, after more than a year's wait, can salute a home victory. <laughs>